Hello and welcome to our Margaritas and Marketing webinar. Uh, today we're going to be talking about how to find your brand voice and we are so glad you could join us today. Um, and of course, since this is a Margs and Marketing event, I hope you have a pen for notes in one hand and a margarita to sip in the other. Uh, so Ashley, do you want to like kick us off? Tell us what we're going to be talking about today. Yes. So, okay. Our webinar recipe of sorts here. So we just want to go over what's on the menu today. Uh, so we're going to go through Brand Voice 101, so just talking about quickly what is Brand Voice, why it's important. We're going to dive into understanding your brand identity, maintaining a cohesive brand, and then we're going to hit some of the questions that we came up with that we think that maybe you would have asked. Um, that being said, we still invite you to directly email us with any lingering questions you have, and we're happy to answer those one-on-one. -on -one. But before we really dive into things, let's do just quick introductions. So I'm Ashley. I am the founder and chief marketing officer at Coastline Marketing. We are a boutique digital marketing agency based here in Canton, Ohio. We've worked across different industries like healthcare, automotive, fintech, manufacturing, hospitality. The list continues to go on. If you're feeling friendly, you should definitely go ahead and follow me on social and connect with me on LinkedIn. I love meeting new people. Going outside of the professional realm here, I am a Florida native who now resides in Ohio. I'm a wife, a dog mom of two, a cat mom of two, and a human mom of one. Um, you can often find me traveling the national parks. Yes, I do have an account for that. It's called the Gapers Atlas, in case you're curious, and working on our flower farm. So let's take it over to you, Rachel. Hi, I'm Rachel, or you can call me Ray. Um, I'm a digital marketing consultant, and I specialize in social media and content marketing, and I just support small and micro businesses through those services. And I'm obsessed with small and local entrepreneurs, um, artists, makers, anyone like that. You know, I want to help them better tell their story and better connect with their audience. Um, I created Everyday Akron and The Hair and Ring. Those are like two community platforms for the city of Akron, basically, and anyone who lives here. And The Hair and Ring is for small businesses and marketers. Um, Beyonce super fan. She has an album coming out. I'm so excited. And I have a dog named Georgia B. The B is actually for Beyonce. So go figure. <laughs> um, and yeah, if you want to follow Everyday Akron, do so on Instagram or even join the Heronry Facebook group. I'd love to see some of you there. Uh, so Ashley, why don't you start us off with Brand Voice 101? What, what is Brand Voice? All right. So for those of you who may be just starting out, who don't already have a Brand Voice outline, we're just going to start clean slate from the beginning. So what is Brand Voice? So to be formal, when we talk about brand voice, we're referring to your brand's like personality, their values through written or spoken communication. So what it really narrows down to is the tone, the language, the style that it's used in your marketing materials. So that's your advertising, your social media, customer service interactions, um, pretty much any brand communications, and then how that resonates with your target audience. So why does this matter? Um, your brand voice is essentially the voice of your brand, putting it simply, right? So it's how your brand speaks to your customers, how it's communicating its identity, values, and offerings. And just like how you own your own voice and your personality shape how people perceive and interact with you as an individual, your brand voice shapes how people perceive and interact with your brand. So putting this into kind of an example, if you think about it as if Nike suddenly started using a formal academic language in its advertisements instead of the energetic motivational tone that we're all really familiar with, or of a luxury fashion brand like Chanel suddenly started using slang, has a language on its social media channels, it just wouldn't feel quite right. Um, and that's because your brand voice is that critical part of your brand identity, which we are going to dive into. But it helps you differentiate yourself from your competitors. It helps you connect with your target audience. It builds trust, credibility. So when your brand voice is authentic and consistent and aligned with your brand values, it becomes the powerful tool that allows you to build brand awareness, loyalty, advocacy, um, and what sets you apart from the competition. Yeah, I feel like brand voice is something that we just innately create as we develop a brand. But if we don't take a minute to dissect what we're building and create it on purpose, then it's going to easily get muddy. And that's especially true when more than one person is working on the brand. And so we'll get to that later with brand guidelines. But, you know, how do we dial in that brand voice if we already have it, which you're going to have it anyways. <laughs> uh, one of my favorite marketing books is Fascinate by Sally Hogshead. You can see it on the screen. 
Um, and she breaks down seven advantages that you can use to persuade and captivate your audience while making your brand irresistible. And I mean, don't we all want to be like irresistible to our audiences? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the seven fascination advantages are innovation, passion, power, prestige, trust, mystique, and alert. I'm going to run through all of them really quickly. Um, but if this is like resonating with you, I highly, highly recommend to find this book at your local library, buy it offline. Um, you're going to get so much out of it. Uh, so this is a great place to start if you want to hone in on your brand voice. So maybe think about one of these that really resonates with your brand. And if you want, you can also tack on a second one. Um, and like really create something special. So brands that focus on innovation, they are forward thinking, bold, and visionary. They do the opposite of what everyone else is doing and invent surprising solutions. And my example for this is Apple in its heyday. Uh, passion, these brands create a strong and immediate emotional response and they're warm and social. I like to think of, you know, beloved brands on social media like Target, Dunkin', and even like Jenny's Splendid Ice Creams. Power. These brands lead with authority. They're assertive, purposeful, and goal-oriented. And my example for this, basically because it recently happened, was the Oscars because it sort of shows that award show's ability to launch actors and those in the film industry into superstardom. You know, if you get that little gold statue, boom, you've got the power. <laughs> um, prestige. These brands are respected and established. They set the standard. Um, they create limited availability and increased perceived value. So going back to high-end fashion houses, this could be, you know, a Gucci and Yves Saint Laurent, a Prada, really any of them. Trust. These brands rely on, or brands that rely on trust are stable, dependable, they're comforting, they're authentic, and they use familiar cues. Um, maybe not like a high fashion brand, but a luxury fashion label, The Row, which is actually by the Olsen twins just everyone kind of innately loves them and you're like okay they make great clothes and they love them they just have that trust built in i think um uh, mystique oh i just realized they're numbered one two three they should be uh five six seven anyways mystique <laughs> these brands spark curiosity and build mythology which sounds like a big concept right mm -hmm. um they're observant they're private they're calculated I promise I won't bring Beyonce into every single webinar, but she's my best example for this. You know, you will. <laughs> I probably will. I'm sorry. <laughs> she gives you information only on her terms. So she might drop a hint here and there, or she might give you a whole album out of nowhere. Um, or even you might not hear from her for a while. And that just sort of elevates the mystique that she has. Um, and the last one, alert. So if brands are using this fascination advantage, these brands pay attention to the details. They sweat the small stuff. So they're organized, they're efficient, they're precise. Um, I actually try to think of like a really good example for this. And that's what I could come up with that, you know, might resonate with some of us is Jessica Yellen. She is, I think she used to be a reporter on some channel, but then kind of went and did her own thing to sort of report on news in a very clear, concise way through social media, through her newsletter, and sort of like reach people where they're at versus like, you know, big name news organization. Um, so alert, it's not scary. It's just, you know, pay attention to details and whatnot. So my brand identity alert. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So like I said before, like you don't have to follow just one. You can sort of pair them up and create, you know, something really special with your brand and read this book. Like I've read it, I don't know, two or three times now and I still reference it all the time. So it's really good. And this is like a really good way to lead into brand identity. You know, we talk about brand voice. There's also brand identity and even brand image. So I created this quick little like hierarchy where the brand identity is sort of your foundation upon which you'll build your brand voice. And then once you have those two, you can create your brand image. And that's sort of more surface level. I think when we talk about branding, people tend to think of like, oh yeah, they've got a cool logo. They've got these colors. Maybe they have a certain font. And those are all important, but I feel like that's kind of the last piece you've put together when you're coming coming up with these other items. And then we'll get to this later, but all of those are going to make up your brand guidelines. So what is a brand identity? Um, a brand identity encompasses everything that makes your brand unique. It's like that fingerprint that you have. So it's your values, mission, vision, personality, and even your positioning in the market. So it's the essence of who you are as a brand and what you stand for. Yeah, I think those are great 
place to start. So just diving in then how to develop that strong and your effective brand voice, you have to understand what your brand identity is. So asking some questions, you and your team, here are those just kind of help you guide your process as you're going through this. So starting out with just what are our brand values and beliefs? And you'd be surprised at how hard some of these questions are to answer, but your brand values are the guiding principles that shape your decisions and actions as a company. So they reflect what you stand for and what you're going to prioritize as a brand. Um, leading into them, what is our personality? So these are different. <laughs> if your brand was a person, how would you describe its personality? Are you fun and playful, serious and professional? Um, this is going to help you better understand what your tone and the style of your brand voice is. And then we have who is our target audience. So to effectively talk with your audience, you're going to have to understand who they are, what they care about, what motivates them. So consider things like their demographics, interests, their pain points, um, challenges, all of that's going to feed into this. So then what sets apart from competitors? What makes your brand unique and differentiates you from the competitors in your market? So figure out what your competitive advantage is and really lean into that. This is going to help you tailor your brand voice to stand out in a crowded marketplace. At the end of the day, if somebody is reading a sentence from you and a sentence from your competitor without logos involved, without a website involved, they should be able to pinpoint that it's you speaking above everyone else in your space. Um, that is a lot easier said than done. And I recognize that, but that is what we are striving for here. And then you want to talk about what are your brand goals and objectives? So what do you hope to achieve with your brand voice, whether it's increasing brand awareness, driving sales? building customer loyalty, your brand voice should align with your overarching business goals. Um, it also should correlate to what you want someone to feel when they talk with you. Should they feel welcome? Should they feel that you know, you're an authority figure? That should also come through here. Another great place to start is by defining what you are not. So Select does a really great job of this in their brand voice guidelines, um, which you can see here on the screen. So I really love that they did this. Instead of defining who you are, that can be really hard, but define who you're not. So confident, not cocky, right? Witty, but never silly. So start to think through if you're really serious brand, right? Like what do you absolutely not want to convey? Um, I really love that they put this simply. Then they also wrote this out into kind of a little bit of more, they put a little more meat behind it. So they said, you know, we are characterful, but we never let character overwhelm our content. But we have to say it's infinitely more important than being admired for the way we say it. If people can't see the substance for the style, we've gone wrong. So really put some words behind that. This is probably my favorite example of brand voice, in all honesty. But I could go on and on about it. Anyway, um, I did a similar exercise with this when I went, worked for a pet manufacturing company. As a team, when we sat down and we started talking about who and how we wanted to be portrayed and what we wanted our voice to be, everyone seemed to freeze I'm sorry if you can hear my child in the background. <laughs> Got his voice and he likes to use it. <laughs> um, but it, for some reason, really stumped everybody. We just couldn't get there. And so instead, we went through the exercise of defining exactly what we were not, um, which can be silly, right? When you're sitting in a room full of people writing on a blackboard what you don't want to be. Um, silly options come out and those are okay because ultimately when you take a step back, those silly options sometimes do really help you focus in on what you are. Um, so don't be afraid to kind of go into those. But I'm going to turn it back over to you, Rachel, to talk about how we're going to maintain just a cohesive brand voice thing. Because once you have it, it can be hard for everyone to get their hands on it and kind of muddy the waters a little bit. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Once, you know, what, what's that phrase like one too many cooks in a kitchen or too many cooks sp spoil the soup? Oh, gosh. What are those? Yeah. Now that you're saying that, there's quite a few. <laughs> yeah. So... That's why implementing brand guidelines is like so important. Um, like once you set on your brand voice, identity and image, you'll want to create a document for brand guidelines. And within that document, include as many clear, concise details as possible so you can ensure your branding is consistent across the board. If you feel like you're going overboard, keep going. Like some people just need to be hit over the head with this information. Um and this goes for external and internal communications as well. I think a lot of businesses sometimes get sloppy internally uh, because they think it doesn't matter as much, but it really can. So for example, like if you're not consistent with your brand internally, you could find those inconsistencies leaking out to the public. So your colors might be a little off, wording might be slightly changed, the tone might be different, so on and so forth. Um, 
Like for example, a team member could be in a rush and accidentally grab the wrong info or work for misinformation or something that you thought was going to only be internal could turn external. Someone yeah. might send an email and then oopsie daisy, you got a mess on your hands, which is probably, it probably won't be that big of a mess, but it's going to get muddy. It's going to get weird, right? Oh yeah. Yep. I have, I think this happened with both of us. We've worked with a brand before that, um, you know, had everything in one solid place. You can easily access all of their brand guidelines. And then you go to look at their email signatures and every single person in the company <laughs> has an email signature. Um, and that seems like such a small detail until you look at the bigger picture, right? One person's using a wrong logo. One person's using the old brand slogan. Um, that then becomes really hard for your customer too on the B2B side to really understand who you are and what you're doing. And if you come across sloppy there, it's still not a good look. I everybody thinks like external matters the most, but no, sometimes those internal communications can be the most damning. So definitely super important. Um, but having both worked in B2B and B2C, I think we've been asked probably a thousand questions when it comes to brand voice and a few have particularly stuck out for us. Um, obviously, since this is a recording, we aren't able to answer all of those questions that we hope that you have after this. Um, so please, again, just a reminder to send those in. But we did want to quickly touch on the two questions that we feel like we get asked a lot. One being, when we say consistency, do we mean that you can truly never stray from your brand voice? Um, so this is a tough one. I, Rachel, I'm like looking at you like, Rachel, this one's hard. Um, but going into social voice versus like your internal communications voice versus your blog website voice, I mean, it goes on and on, right? And so I think overall, and Rachel can touch on this as well, but your brand voice should have a common thread. So if you are consistently professional and professional exudes into your social posts, right? So you're not going to be doing maybe the crazy TikTok dance, but that doesn't mean that you still can't have a personality there. You can still show the personality of the people who work for you and exude some of that like fun, friendly tone that maybe you wish you were um, into them. At the end of the day, right? Like me as a brand, I'm not Wendy's. So I'm not going to go post crazy things to any of my platforms because that's not my brand voice. That's not my brand. But that doesn't mean that I can't have fun in other ways that do match my brand identity. Exactly. I think just like humans, we all contain multitudes. So, you know, there's a little flexibility, but you got to make sure you have a good foundational base to, you know, stick with. Yeah. Um, second one that we get asked, you absolutely have to have this clearly defined. Um, I cannot say yes too many times in this scenario. So please, yes, have this clearly defined. Brand guidelines are not just for you. So you might think, well, even if you're just a one woman show, right? You might be saying, well, it's just me. So it doesn't matter. I know who I am. I know who my brand voice is. That's correct. Until one day you get larger and you continue to grow and someone else comes in underneath of you and they say, what's your brand voice? And you sit and you think, well, I just know it, but you don't know how to give it to them. That is as somebody who comes into, you know, ghost for people, right? That's really hard then to say, okay, well, you don't, you can know what your brand voice is, but you don't have it defined for somebody to work from. So it's not just for you, it's for future hires, it's for anybody that you might be working with to help you build something for your brand. Those are still important beyond what you could possibly do. Yeah, I think it's also good to have them clearly defined if you're going to work with someone else, because you could walk into a meeting, say, oh yeah, I know it, here you go, five bullet points, you're done. But then you get to the end of the quarter and they're reviewing, you know, the KPIs and everything. And they're like, well, this didn't really hit the mark. That's because our brand voice is these other five bullet points. And you're like, wait a minute, you you said it was these other five. So it can get really tricky, really get messy, really fast. <laughs> you work with like a lot of people on a team. I've had this happen yeah. where like five people are touching social and then you go back to look at your calendar for the month and you're like, huh, that doesn't <laughs> sound like me. That sounds like Andrea or whoever it is. And then you're like, weird, Andrea's writing in a different voice than I am. <laughs> um, and then that's not a good look either. So definitely have this defined for everybody. Oh yeah. All right. We kind of flew through this one, but that's all we have for you today. Um, hopefully this gets you thinking about ways to improve your brand voice and to make it more consistent across the board. Um, be sure to watch your emails. We got some related news and info. You know us, the fun and knowledge does not just stop here. Um, and in the meantime, if you have any questions about what we've discussed and whatnot, um, feel free to reach out to us directly. We have our emails right there. Um, and thank you. Thank you again for joining us. We hope to see you again at a future Margaritas and Marketing webinar or events. We have exciting things coming. So if you're 
interested in upcoming events, make sure you subscribe to both of our newsletters. And you can send us an email too to catch up on what's coming up in the next few weeks. But excited for more. Thanks for coming. Yay. Bye. Bye.